So when you look into black laws, you see the word arbitrary, an arbitrary power, and it describes it this way, power to act according to one's own will, especially applicable to power conferred on an administrative officer who is not furnished any adequate determining principle. Black Law's fifth edition, arbitrary, means in an arbitrary manner, as fixed or done at pleasure, without adequate determining principle, not found in the nature of things, non-rational, not done or acting according to reason or judgment, depending on the will alone, absolutely in power, tyrannical and depostic. Arbitrary Black Law's 7th edition, arbitrary, depending on individual discretion, specific and determined by a judge, rather than by fixed rules, procedures, or law. Black's Law, edition 9, arbitrary, depending on individual's discretion, specific, determined by a judge, rather than by fixed rules, procedures, or law. So a human being is born free, a man and a woman is born free, and they have the capacity, they have that capacity to remain free. That word free and freedom, you hear me say this a lot on my videos, that I believe it's intrinsic to our nature, it's part of who we are, this freedom, it's an expression of a human being. An example I can give you is my dog. This may sound funny, but I have a, a German Shepherd. He's a male German Shepherd. And boy, is a, he a character, okay? I could put a choke chain on him. I can get a, an electric shock collar, for example, or any other of the tools that are out there to use against this animal. And I could train him with these tools to take away the freedom that he expresses. I could make him obedient to me, subjected to me through these tools. However, I choose not to. He's in line in a certain way. I have corrected him. However, the way he expresses his freedom, and this is just an animal, I enjoy watching it. For example, if someone comes up to us when we are walking and they want to pet him or want to have a conversation or, you know, get into my presence, he decides for his own self if he wants you to speak with him or give any attention to him and if you look at him or try to address him or speak to him if he doesn't want you to talk to him or bother him he'll bark at you and intimidate you and he, he feels the fear that comes out of the human being when he does that that's his expression that's his nature coming out and it's his right so as long as he doesn't bite anybody or hurt anybody to decide who he wants to if you will, uh, fellowship with, or allow them to touch him. And as I said, I could stand there, choke chain him, use another tool, give him a, a, a Caesar Milan kick, and tell him, no, don't do that. You don't act like that, don't behave like that, I want you to behave like this. You're my dog, you, you come in, in, into under my authority, and you change your behavior. But I love that expression. I love to see that nature in operation in him. The fact that is, a dog could teach me, a living human being, the fact of what it is to allow someone to come into your life and interfere with you, or not to allow someone to come into your life and interfere with you. And all of us here in Canada, as men and women, first and foremost, because before we have been designated uh, persons and Canadian citizens under law, we are primary first and foremost men and women and human beings and we have the right we have the right to decide who will come into our lives who will speak to us who will take our energy and who will fellowship with us now here in Canada they like to use arbitrary power this is the type of power that is being used here in this system a lot of people say oh you know the systems against me and uh, and they have this power in the system and they can't do anything about it. Well, term it properly. What they're using against all of us here is an arbitrary power. And they use that arbitrary power to remove our freedoms. 
to remove our freedoms. For example, me and you decide to go fishing tonight. We go down to the river or go down to the lake, uh, throw in the fishing rods and start fishing. A forest ranger comes by and says, hello, can you please produce some identification for me? You're fishing and you're taking uh, fish from the river or the lake. Can you produce some identification with me? You see, my dog, my dog would turn around and start barking and woofing and growling as to say, who are you and what gives you the right to come into my area, into my master's area and demand anything or even speak to us. As far as I'm concerned, my master hasn't said that it's okay for you to speak to us. But yet, that forest ranger, and this never happened to me, I'm just giving you as an example, that forest ranger will feel that he has the power, the administrative power to come right up to you and make a demand. So when he does that and say, I demand, okay, oh, I see you with a fishing rod, give me your fishing license. When he does that, he's now arbitrarily interfered with you as a man and a woman. Remember, you are free. You are born free and you have the capacity to remain free. So what gave that man the right to come up and interfere with you and to make a demand upon you? Nothing but arbitrary power. Nothing but them saying that we are in a de facto system and we are operating in this de facto system. You are a person. As such, you don't have the capacity. You're not operating under the designation of being free. The Canadian citizen, the legal person, is not free. Therefore, I have the right to come and interfere with you, arbitrarily interfere with you. They may point to a statute or a regulation and say, well, look, the fishing regulation, I'm just giving you an example, uh, the hunting regulations say that you have to have a license to be fishing and, and you can only catch a cer certain type of fish and a certain amount of fish during this time of the year and you're not abiding by that. Therefore, I'm going to ticket you and I'm going to penalize you for your actions. But that statute and regulation, it only applies to a person. And when they take that statute and regulation and then approach you and say, you have an obligation to me, they've arbitrarily interfered with you as a human being. Because there's no article of law that gives that man the right to come and interfere with you as a human being. He automatically designates you or renders you a legal person, a Canadian citizen, as such he's claiming the authority over you by a statute or enactment. But if you stand in your position as a human being, as a man and woman, and he's trying to make a demand on you, then he's arbitrarily interfering with you. There's no article of law that he can use to make you force you to take recognition into that legal person. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6, 6 states that everyone has the right to recognition as a legal person, no obligation. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 16, states the exact same thing. You have the right. You can say, I choose to enter into recognition as a juridical personality. Here's my ID. Have fun. Ticket me. Take away this rod. Do all that you want. Treat me as a subject or a servant. But you also have another fundamental right. And that right is that I refuse to take recognition as a legal person. I am a human being and I'm standing as a human being. And what you are doing is arbitrarily interfering with me by making demands upon me. By what right do you have? Your rights, your laws, your enactments and your statutes, they apply to a legal person. A character that has been assigned to me, the human being, which I possess and I can use when I choose. And I'm not choosing right now. And what power do you have to force me to choose? So the state parties to these present covenants, they were under obligation to make sure that there was a way a way that was created in their individual countries, in their individual territories, for the expression of these articles of law to come forth in their own domestic law. So now let's apply Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and let's apply Article 16 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which states that everyone has the right to recognition as a person before the law, no obligation. So then that would mean that the State Party Canada was under obligation to express in their laws this freedom, this way for a human being not to have the obligation to be recognized as a person, to be able to challenge this jurisdiction, to be able to challenge this designation. We would have to see this present within the law. So habeas, cor habeas corpus, that is a word that 
every human being needs to start becoming f familiar with, habeas corpus. It's the medium or the me me mechanic or the mechanism that you can use in order to challenge any, any jurisdiction. Okay? Not just prison. Some people are under the impression that uh, the term or the designation or the title or using the, the phrase habeas corpus means to present the body before the judge in order to determine whether you have to stay in prison. No. Half of that is correct. Habeas corpus means bring me before your rulers, your authority, your court system, your judge in order to challenge not the fact that I'm in prison but the jurisdiction of whatever the cause may be whether it be for a criminal activity, whether it be for a contractual obligation, whether it be for uh, a, a taxation issue, anything. Habeas corpus. That is the way to challenge any jurisdiction from the point of view as a human being. So we find that word habeas corpus in the Canadian Constitution Act of 1982. And we also find it present in the Code of Civil Quebec Procedure. And in other provinces, if you look, in the statutes and regulations, you're going to find habeas corpus also mentioned. Now, particularly in the Canadian Constitution, habeas corpus described as this. Everyone has the right on arrest or detention. So if you have been placed under arrest or under detention, no matter what the charge is, everyone on arrest or detention has the right to have the validity of the detention determined by way of habeas corpus and to be released to be released if it's determined that the detention is not lawful or the arrest is not lawful so here it's saying in the Canadian Constitution that everyone a human being or a man when they are placed under arrest they have the right to ha challenge because here it says to have the validity of the detention determined so they have the right to challenge, to challenge the arrest or the detention. So when you are placed under arrest or under detention by a peace officer or a police officer, then you have the right to invoke habeas corpus. And that is saying that I am declaring that I am challenging, challenging the validity, the validity of this arrest or detention. And I want to have it determined if this is a lawful arrest or detention. Now notice the word in the Canadian Constitution Act, it didn't say legal. They didn't want to know if it's a legal arrest or a, 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 a proper arrest in the legal qualification. They wanted to know if it was a, a lawful arrest. Well, as we know, people who study their rights and freedoms, we talk about lawful excuse, lawful rights, lawful freedoms. Well, here, using the word lawful. So that should give a, a click indicating, oh, something must be mentioning concerning a human being here. So. The object of habeas corpus then is to present the body before a judge. That's what they're supposed to do. And when that body, when you go before the judge, you're supposed to challenge the jurisdiction, the validity of whatever the arrest or detention is. The Code of Civil Procedure, habeas corpus in civil matters, 851. Any person who is confined or otherwise restrained of his liberty, except under an order in civil matters, granted by a court or judge having jurisdiction or for some criminal or supposed criminal matter or any other person on his behalf may apply to a judge of the superior court to obtain a right of habeas corpus ordering the person under whose custody he is detained to bring him forth before a judge of the court and to show the cause of his detention so that it may be decided whether such detention is justified the demand is made by motion, supported by an affidavit, affirming the truth of the facts on which it is based. The Code of Civil Procedure, Quebec, Article 12. D. Writs of habeas corpus and demands provided for in Article 846. Code of Civil Procedure. The Superior Court may, at the demand of one of the parties, invoke before judgment a case pending before court subject to its superintending and reforming power or revise a judgment already rendered by such a court in the following cases when there is a want or excess of jurisdiction when the enactment upon which the proceedings have been based or the judgment rendered is null or of no 
effect. So the human being is free and the de facto powers the Canadian system designates designates the human a person and therefore applies the statutes the statutes to the human through the person and therefore takes jurisdiction jurisdiction of the human being because the human enters in enters into recognition as a person and therefore all those statutes now can be enforced upon that person however when those in de facto power try to uh, force you to take recognition or try to yoke you to these enactments statutes or regulations you claim habeas corpus as a human being saying that right now at this moment who you are speaking to is a living breathing man or woman a human being and you cannot apply those enactments and statutes against me if you choose to go forward and apply those enactments and statutes against me I will claim habeas corpus I will defend against this and then afterwards I will return and come against you for your actions because you are failing to afford to me and grant to me and allow me to express my fundamental rights and freedoms which is I am not a servant I am not a subject of the majesty of the Queen I am a free man I am a free human being and you don't have the right to force me to bow my knee down to these statutes and regulations the only power you have is to operate on a person and I refuse to enter into recognition as that legal person understanding that habeas corpus is a challenge of jurisdiction a challenge of jurisdiction now some people can invoke habeas corpus from the point of view as a person or as a Canadian citizen but uh, when I'm speaking about it what I'm describing has to deal with habeas corpus from the point of view of a human being a man or a woman because what you're trying to challenge or what you are indeed challenging is a jurisdiction that they are exercising upon you now when you go into the Quebec's code of civil procedure article 12 it talks about habeas corpus and it says to go into article 846 and have a look there now when you look into 846 these are the reasons the reasons they give in order for you to invoke habeas corpus or that operation of law meaning habeas corpus or whatever operations of law flow or stem from that word or that designation and it says that when there has been a want or excess of jurisdiction okay that will give you an excuse to invoke habeas corpus so you're challenging their jurisdiction because you're saying they're using excessive jurisdiction why well because whatever they're trying to do to me it only applies to a person a person and I'm designated or claimed as a man human being or a woman and therefore that, that enactment that statute that they're trying to use against me its jurisdiction doesn't apply to me its power doesn't apply to me now when you keep on going in that article of, uh, of law it even states that it says when the enactment upon which the proceedings are based so we'll stop there when the enactment upon which the proceedings are based so here's a statute a regulation or a law that's been given royal assent that applies to a person now those in de facto power are taking those laws and trying to apply them to you they're, they're making you or considering you or designating you a person and they're applying those laws against you now it says here when the enactment upon which the proceedings are based is null or of no effect then you can claim habeas corpus or you can go against them through this why because again as a human being as a man the enactments that they are trying to use against you it's no or it has no effect upon you it's supposed to when you understand what's going on the freedom for the man for the human being is there within law so as you're invoking habeas corpus the operation of law is saying that it when there has been want or excess of jurisdiction and especially if they're using an enactment or they're basing whatever they're doing whether it's giving you a ticket trying to make you pay a tax or whatever it may be they're basing it upon an enactment then 
you have the right to claim that it, it is null or has no force or effect upon you because of the fact that these are all for persons and not for men. And it's just funny how in Quebec, in the Code of Civil Procedure, how it groups it together and they term it with habeas corpus. Because when you understand about habeas corpus, although the direct designation or the direct wording means present the body before the judge, it's because you're looking for liberty. It's because you're looking to challenge the jurisdiction or challenge the reason why you were being held in prison. Nowadays, <clears throat> not for everything that you do will you go to prison, but turn back the clock and let's say for example if you owed the state money, right away they would throw you in prison. Nowadays, if the state claims that you owe the money, they send you uh, letters, notifications and say, if you don't pay, we're going to seize certain goods of your house and they make all threats before they would actually finally, if they could, but finally would throw you in jail. But back in the old days, for everything basically that you did, you just got punished by being thrown in jail. So habeas corpus was a way of just challenging any jurisdiction. Nowadays in the laws today, when you look at habeas corpus, you find it being expressed in that way. Although it does apply to mean, say, bring you before the court, and we see it expressed in the criminal code, we also see it expressed in civil codes. In, in civil codes. So it's very clear. So let's use this same thing, this same uh, typology, let's use the same type here for taxation, for example. Okay? So they send you a taxation notice, you know that they're using an enactment, the Income Tax Act, ACT, and that should only apply to a person. Whether natural or, or uh, artificial, it still only applies to a person. So they're using an enactment and they're trying to commence a proceeding against you saying that you owe them dollars, you owe them money for, for this enactment. Yet, you can claim that that enactment doesn't have any application upon a man. And there's an excess of jurisdiction going on right here. And it should be rendered no or of no effect upon you. That would be your claim. So you see how it works out, not only in criminal matters, but also in civil matters. It works out in all areas of our life. Once you understand what this habeas corpus is and what it represents to you, it's basically you throwing up a red flag and saying, I challenge this jurisdiction. 